Welcome back, friends. How are you doing? Thank you for joining me for episode two of the vlog series on Cody Good Art. Um, in this episode, I wanted to um, go over a, a little more in depth of how I got interested in doing puppetry to begin with. And then I'm going to take you through the first set of stages of my designing a puppet and what I'm going to design it for. So hopefully you'll stay tuned for that. But before we go on with the rest of the episode, I wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who showed an interest and came and subscribed, watched my video, left comments. It was so heartwarming um, to see uh, people respond to what I'm doing and what I hope to share on this channel. So thank you so much for showing up. Um, I know it was a small beginning, but I would really um, hope that we can, um, or I can, I should say, since it's just me, um, show you more um, content as you know the weeks progress um, my intention is to post at least one vlog a week and if i have some art content that i can add to the art part of it i will do that uh, but of course you know the puppet part of it is just going to take a little time because we're just starting out but um, i encourage you to please keep leaving comments and also if you have any questions or you want to know um, anything, whether it's how to do something, anything about materials. I have worked for so many years in the art materials industry, so I've used a lot of stuff. And as you may have noticed, I showed a slideshow of some digital art that I have made over the last five to six years as a slideshow. And as I mentioned in the previous uh, video, I am a multidisciplinary artist, so I work in a lot of different mediums, and I've tried a lot of different things. So I'd be happy to share what I know with you guys. I will be doing that as I go along when I'm making my projects. But, but I know sometimes you might say, "Hey, I need to. I I want to know about a certain kind of paint or a process." And if I know how to help you, I will definitely tell you, show you. Uh, if I don't, I can point you in the right direction. So anyway, thank you for joining me. Um, so on to puppets, uh, as most kids, you know, we grow up watching Sesame Street and various other shows that might involve puppets. And for me, you know, as a kid growing up in the mid to late sixties and early seventies, we had, um, puppets, uh, like HR Puff and stuff by Sid Marty Croft and Sigmund and the Sea Monster, um, uh, the banana splits. I mean, there are, there were several that were so cool. And you also saw a lot of um, stop motion animation by Rankin Bass, who did a lot of the Christmas specials, like uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and Santa Claus is Coming to Town. So all that stuff kind of uh, worked towards um, encouraging me, you know, to at least think about the possibility of what puppets could do. But you know, I didn't have an opportunity to really get into that. Um, much early on in my life, you know, uh, I was interested in it even in theater when I went to when I went to college. You know, I majored in theater and fine art, so I was interested in puppetry there, but I didn't get a chance to do anything with it because you know, puppetry wasn't really looked at as a serious uh, part of theater, at least not where you know when I went to school, it was relegated to children's TV and children's programming and. There's nothing wrong with that at all, but puppetry has such a large, uh, colorful history uh, that goes beyond just children's programming. For some reason, that seems to be the emphasis in this country, but I think um, I, as well as a few others, are trying to change that, or hoping to change that, that introducing puppetry to adults and young adults, you know, older audiences that can see the power of puppets and and how they can tell a story in ways that a human actor just can't do um 
I will try and leave a few links below uh, in the description box to uh, show you a couple of things that really inspired me um, that I recently discovered. And these are all, you know, Europe, European based uh, videos, but it just shows you how powerful the video of uh, the puppet could be. Um, as I said, I, you know, I had an interest, you know, from a ch as, as a child growing up, you know, all through my life. And when I started making dolls, I actually, and that was 30 years ago, actually, this year, um, I would run across uh, references to puppetry and I would actually, you know, be guided uh, to watching films with puppets and um, really, really had a keen interest. But like I said, I wasn't really working in theater at all. I even made an attempt to reach out to uh, a few local puppeteers or at least try to get some information. And it just never really worked out. So 30 years later, um, I'm, I, the quarantine hits because of COVID. And um, so we're left with, I'm left, all of us are left with lots of time on our hands. And um, I, you know, I, I really dove into making art, but it just wasn't, the doll making is awesome and I love it, but it just wasn't enough for me. So I thought, you know, I've always wanted to do puppets. I tried a, a few times in the past and maybe this is the time, maybe this is, this is the chance I have to really bite the bullet and say, okay, let's just do this. So I started in earnest studying everything, watching everything, reading everything that I could find on puppetry and puppet technique and trying to figure out, you know, how do I want to approach the art of puppetry? And what was funny is it was staring at me all along. It's like I looked at all my characters and I had a few, a couple friends say, hey, why don't you just make the puppets look like your dolls? And I thought, you know what? That's a good idea. So that's what I'm intending to do. But I wanted to show you guys um, the very first puppet I got. And it's not really a, I mean, it's not a true puppet. It's a toy. It's made to be a puppet, but it's really for a little kid. And it's meant just as a toy. You can put your hand in it and move the mouth a little bit, but it's just not made to uh, really perform like a puppet. But my true love bought it for me, God, seven or more years ago. And it just always brings me joy every time I see it and I guess in its own way has silently been trying to convince me that puppetry really would be a cool thing to do. So here he is. Uh, this is my my puppet friend. Um, some people have asked me if he's got a name. Uh, I never really gave him a name. Well, I should say I tried to give him a name. Uh, but he didn't like it. I was going to call him Bobo, and uh, he he just yeah no he didn't he didn't like that name. But he's he says you don't need to know my name, at least not now. Maybe when um, I graduate to actually being able to call myself a puppeteer, he might tell me his name, but not until then. So anyway, he spent all this time up on a shelf staring down at me, which I know some people might think that's creepy. But uh, just silently sending me these thoughts of um, you, you can be a puppeteer if you want. You can make puppets, but you have to be ready. You have to know when the time is right. And so I think now's the time's right. I thank the universe for this gift of time, first of all. I mean, I have never had a chance in my life with this much time to devote to something that means so much to my heart. And that's what this whole process is all about, is following your heart, doing something that feels good, bring uh, joy or a sense of wholeness to somebody, you know, because puppets are so powerful. I, I mean, I have wept numerous times watching puppet shows because of how powerful they are, how they can reach, just reach inside of you and and touch a part of you that you you may not have known was there but maybe help help you understand more about who you are as a person and i know as uh as someone who is in the process of making puppets and and hopefully 
you know, performing with them, um, I really am looking forward to seeing how it transforms my life. I've spent a lot of time, you know, in self-reflection and wanting to be a better person. And I want to be able to bring a sense of peace or joy or compassion or understanding through my art forms. And so I am really excited to welcome you into that life, into that world with me. Um, and I hope that maybe it will inspire you, not necessarily to make puppets, but maybe it will inspire you to create. Because I believe the one thing that separates us from the animals is our ability to create. Because not many, if any, animals actually make art. I mean, there are some, a few that might do something that we would interpret as art, but but to actually purposely create art is solely unique to we humans on this planet. And it's something very powerful. I mean, we are creator beings and that's what we're here to do. And to me, that's what art uh, allows us to participate in, is our ability to create. So if I can do anything to encourage that in you, I feel I have succeeded. So thank you for, like I said, following along with me. And stay tuned because we are going to start my first puppet build. I'm really excited. I have the little story based on a, a poem I wrote years and years ago in college but I thought it was rather appropriate for this whole situation we're in globally. And uh, so anyway, thank you and stay tuned. We'll be back with some puppet making. Four. Hello friends, welcome back. I wanted to uh, introduce you to my process of what I'm planning to do with my puppet show and uh, my puppet making. Um, I thought it was really important to bring you along on my journey, like I said in you know our, the first segment of the video. So I, here's an introduction to my process. Um, so this show started from a core idea, and the idea was I wanted to use a poem that I had written way back in my senior year in college, and the poem is called Dust Speck. Let's see if I can bring it closer to the, there we go, Dust Speck. Um, and basically the, the story or the poem is, um, an observation of someone who's been, you know, who's alone, who feels alone or isolated. And, um, they see this lonely dust speck floating through this, through space, through the air, uh, past them. And they have this reverie or this fantasy about what this dust speck, um, what kind of life this dust speck has, like, you know, what, what, where did it come from? Where is it going? Does it think about what it's doing? Does it have consciousness or not? Is it alive or not? And then kind of fantasize about, well, where was it going? Can I go with you? Can I go with you? Or at least that's, that was the thought is like, you know, it's almost a feeling of, of wanting to be free, you know, like he, the character or the ob observer doesn't feel free, feels trapped or isolated. And yet this dust speck's floating around free and just doesn't have to worry about anything. So I thought that was really appropriate for uh, what we're going through with this quarantine, isolation because of the pandemic. And um, it's sort of my treatise or my um, statement about it. I mean, I did make a piece of art, you know, about it a while back, which uh, at some point I'll show you guys. But anyway, um, so that's the core idea. Now, the poem will be the only dialogue. It will be sort of a narration style um, kind of thing. And then there will be action before and after the, the poem part is, you know, spoken. So I will actually rewrite this in a format where it gives stage direction and movement direction, uh, camera direction. But I just wanted to show you what the core idea was. Now, the character for this is going to be an old man. Um, I don't know why I'm drawn to old men, but I just love using older characters. They just have so much history and just actual character. So that's why they call them characters, I guess. Um, and the fabric that I want to use is uh, wool felt. I've been using wool felt in a lot of my um, fabric figures, textile, textile sculptures, 
over the last year or so, and I really, really, really like it. It's real strong. It's durable. You can actually do some fun stuff with it. Um, one of the things you can do is you can needle felt, which is what I did with this guy. This piece of blue wool felt, which I needle, need, um, I needle felted this sort of orange shape here in yellow, and then I stitched over it with some gold thread, and I made sort of like a shooting star, which is kind of fun. Um, but you can do things like that with wool felt because the stuff will stick. As you can see, it kind of goes through the back and it, it does stick to it, which is kind of cool. Um, but anyway, I don't know if I'll do much of that with this piece, but I just thought you would find that, um, interesting, but it's such a, a durable and versatile material. Yes, I could use clay to make the, the character, but I really don't want to. I really want to kind of create my own niche of doing textile based uh, puppets if possible. I know that there may be limitations for those as well, but you know, I won't know until I try. Um, I, I just really am looking forward to exploring, um, bringing the story to life with, with figures. So, uh, so the next segment, I will show you the, I have two head, two heads, two head designs that I'm working with, and I'm not sure which one will be best for the for this character. Uh, so I'm going to show you both of what I'm thinking, how what I'm thinking about, and uh, where I'm going to go with it. So anyway, stay tuned to the next for the next segment, and I'll see you in a second. Four. Hello, um, welcome back. All right, so now I have designed my two heads that I was mentioning in the last segment. Uh, this was the first head that I designed. As you can see, it's uh, re relatively three-dimensional. Um, it was based off of this pattern here. And this is uh, the front part. This is the back part. And, um, you know, you stitch those together and it creates a shape kind of like this. And then what I did was I needle felted, or not needle felted, um, needle sculpted just a, a spot to I, where I want to glue my eyes on this if I use this head. Um, I kind of like it, but it's a little stylized. I'm not really sure yet. I mean, it's okay. Um, you know, we'll see. I'm, I'm not really sure if I'd like that one or not. Okay, now this is a, this, this head here is a two-part head. Uh, this is the back and this is the front. I stitched them together um, so that there's like an opening here at the bottom where I can insert the neck. Uh, that's how I, nor that's how I've normally made my, um, figures that I've been working on the last year, but I may, uh, stitch the neck on first, um, since it has, the neck has to be rather loose so that you can turn the head when you're manipula manip manipulating the puppet. So that pattern was, uh, I designed was, this is the front part here. And then this is the back and I just uh, use like a soft, like a, I use the felt for the front or the outside. And then I use the cotton based uh, fabric for the back. Cause it adds, it's, it's a little stretchier than the felt. Um, so that way I have some, it gives me some def, it gives me some uh, shape and some form. And like I said, when I, when I stitch it together, then I'll, it'll be more three dimensional. The thing, reason I like this head um, is because I uh, can then add, applique my nose and my eyes and my mouth features on here um, and then use strips um, like you know when I join them together and if I want to add more detail I can still do that with the needle felting or whatever um, but anyway as you notice the you probably are wondering why didn't I use the gray for the back I just pick whatever I have at hand. So if I need to, I can always go back in. If there's a little bits of this white sh or this pale blue showing, I can always go back in and um, take a, a gray marker and just kind of color it. Um, but I think a lot of it will be, you know, will be covered over um, because, you know, this is going to be the front. So this is the chin area of the, of the uh, face. Um, so you're not going to really see much of it, but I mean, I will probably color, color it just so that it's not so, you know, 
uh, contrasty. Um, I didn't use felt because it creates too much bulk and it's, uh, it's harder for me to stitch together. Um, of course, I solved that problem by using a head like this, whereas it's, it's you know, it's all the, the felt. Um, so I haven't decided yet. We'll see. Uh, but anyway, uh, we'll show you how I start um, creating the, the nose feature and the eyes and stuff in the next segment. So thanks, and I'll see you in a minute. Four. Hey, guys. Welcome back. Um, I wanted to show you some of the progress I've been making on the heads. Um, I, the first head that I tried was this guy. And uh, though I, I kind of like what's going on here, um, I felt that it was a little too tribal looking for what I wanted, especially with the way the lips are. I, I've added too much stuffing to the lips. So of course, I'm not going to throw this away. Um, I'll probably use it for another project at some point, but I just wanted to show you kind of that was the first one. And then I also did a two-part head that I love doing. Um, this is the back, this is the front, and basically these are stitched together so they're kind of like that. And this has like a chin. Um, but it, as you can see, the profile is a little flat. Now the, ba the downside was I I just pulled whatever fabric I had handy to, to do the backing and it just was a little too much contrast. So I ended up not going with this particular uh, piece. Um, like I said, I'll still keep this. I'll probably tone the back so that I can use it for another, another project at some point. So after several redesigns of the pattern, I kind of like finally came up with this guy. And as you can see, the lips are not as pronounced, but there's still a mouth. And I have a nose. I, I just glued the eyes on. Um, so I'm in the process of adding the layers that give 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 him features. Like there's going to be some eyelids and probably a forehead piece up here. Uh, cheeks to kind of uh, finish off this edge here. Um, and then, of course, ears. Uh, and then once I get all the, the basic features done, then I'll probably go in with some needle felting, maybe add some eyebrows and some hair. But uh, this is, as you can see, there's the profile. Um, that's uh, how uh, this is looking so far. And I, I kind of like this guy. Uh, probably not as old looking as I originally intended, but that's okay. It's, it's a funny thing about puppets and dolls, they just tend to have a mind of their own and they just, the character comes, comes out, um, when you least expect it. So, um, so anyway, uh, I'm, I, well, I can show you. I also, you know, I stitched the clothes on the back. What I'm going to do is there's going to be a, a loop here to hold the head when I'm manip manipulating the head. So that's why I wasn't too worried about making the stitching so wonderful. And they're puppets. They're not meant to be sold as an art piece they're they're being used as a as a performance piece so I don't have to be super worried about the back uh, as I said this is there's gonna be a loop here so I didn't have to be too too special about that but um, I'm I'll finish this off uh, probably later today I'll at least get all the features put on put on them and um, I'll bring. I'll show you what the finished piece looks like before I move on to the other things. I am going to be making um, the hands and feet not out of the exact same wool, but it's the same color. It, the The difference is this is the this wool is kind of I don't know if you can tell it's kind of called heathered, so it's it's got little bits of um, light and dark in it, and then this is just a plain, just a plain gray wool felt. It's really nice. I, I like wool felt so much. I mean, it's a different look. I mean, it's not for everybody, you know, but it, it, it's, it's, I just really love this look. So, oh, and if you're wondering about the eyes, these are um, some cabochons I had. Uh, I think they're dark purple or dark red. I can't, I can't remember, but they look black and that's why I wanted to use them. Um, so anyway, that's, that's progress so far. I will talk to you in the next segment. Hello and welcome back. I wanted to show you um, the progress of the head for the puppet. 
um, as you can see I have all the features on now most of these are layers of felt that I've tacked and glued to um, the face or the head to create the features like the nose and the cheeks and the eyes and the brow and uh, thought it turned out I used uh, pastel pencils uh, Carbothello is what I have on hand to do some uh, shadow and uh, highlights to accentuate the features a little bit um, but anyway I think he turned out pretty good so far um, he's not really an old old character but I think he's just going to be an interesting character nonetheless um, actually he seems to show up pretty good on video which is kind of nice so anyway um, that's uh, the head so what I have to do now is uh, um, put the hair on and so I'm going to be auditioning <laughs> some fur fake furs for the hair so I have this gray which I kind of like and then there's this sort of muted grayish blue color which is kind of interesting and then I have this really light sort of pale aqua blue color it's kind of probably hard to see it's more I think it's more pale blue on the video but it's actually a little, got a little bit of an aqua tinge to it this is actually called I think um, Mongolian fur and then I have this other, which is a little more uh, aqua-ish color, bluish aqua color. These were the colors I was kind of leaning towards. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to make a pattern so that the hairline goes kind of around here and then down here and then across the back of the head. Um, so that way he'll have kind of a sort of a full head of hair. But anyway, so that's that's what we're doing. Um, this I'll show you the finished um, head once I get the hair on, and then that'll be it for this this uh, episode. But I just wanted to give you a, at least a little you know brief. It's not really a tutorial, but just kind of explain my process. At some point, if you guys want to see any tutorials of anything as I go, you know I'll be happy to do that. But um, stay tuned and I'll show you the finished thing and it should be shortly. Bye. Four. Welcome back. Um, I just wanted to show you, I got the head finished. I got the hair on. I decided to go with the darker, um, aqua color cause I wanted something that was a little, a little bit of a contrast from the darker gray. Uh, of course I still have to style it and stuff once the, the glue fully sets. Um, but anyway, there's there's uh, what he looks like, his head looks like. I will be putting, attaching um, a, 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 a loop or a ring here on the back so that I can, I can manipulate the head. But there he is. So my next task is to design his body and arms and legs, hands and feet. I ran out of gray felt so uh, the hands and feet will probably have to wait for a few days while I wait for the new felt to arrive. But um, he's coming along pretty well, and I'm looking forward to seeing this puppet finished. So thank you for following along, and I'll see you in Episode 3. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.